views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice Voices, speak up and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stanis. Well, welcome to Voices of Women. Here we are, Friday, January 20th, finally here. It was Inauguration Day. And so there's just lots happening in our country, marches, protests, everything, whether outside in the streets or you're feeling it inside yourself, there's lots going on. And tomorrow is a big women's march in Washington, D.C. and in many cities all over the country. In Seattle, we're expecting 50,000 women. So there's a real call for women to stand strong and be active now. And um, Women of Wisdom is sponsoring with uh, Amazing Grace Spiritual Center, a mindful meditation tonight for the march. We're going to have music and meditation and sharing it's, um, at the Amazing Grace Spiritual Center in Ballard. Information is on our website. Um, just go to womanofwisdom.org and our Facebook page, and you can find out information about it. I uh, hope you'll join us. And, of course, our 25th annual conference, a big year for us, is February 16th to the 20th. And being at WOW, each woman is witnessed and inspired to discover her dreams and realize her gifts and the potential to be a powerful woman, and it's it's so needed. We need that support and being together. It's um, a place to really make connections. So it's an invitation to connect deeper to yourself, your passions, your purpose, and with other women. And we've got many gifted women presenters. You, they've been on my radio show. I have a couple more today. We're going to guide you in very experiential workshops at diverse topics such as music, movement, women's wisdom, life purpose, relationships, sexuality, healing, racism, shamanism, drum making, ritual, astrology, and so much more. Um, And, you know, as a result, you know, we have witnessed over the past um, almost 25 years now, thousands of women have changed their lives, found their purpose, started organizations, and helped to transform their communities in our world. So it's great work to be a part of, and it's very unique, intimate, and you can come to just one event, and you can even walk in the doors for free and experience the ambiance of the art show and the healing temple and our goddess market and all that's there for um, for you to enjoy. So today my first guest is Wendy Rule. She is giving a workshop Sunday, February 19th, on the art of transition, discovering magic at the threshold of change. She is an Australian visionary songstress and weaves together music, magic, and ritual for an otherworldly journey of depth and passion. Wendy's performances honor her deep spiritual and magical connection to nature, and she has an extraordinary voice and beautiful lyrics and a passionate storytelling. She connects us all with our own deep magic. For the past two decades, Wendy has released 10 studio albums and tours the world extensively as a performer and an inspirational magical life coach. She also facilitates online mystery school, Living a Life of Magic. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it's great to catch up with you again. Yeah, so you were at our conference last year, and it's great to have you back. And I also just want to say, too, that i um, so excited you're going to be um, performing, giving a concert on Saturday night of the conference. It's one of our major events of the weekend, along with Kellyanna. Gerard, who I we had on the show a few weeks ago. So that's going to be a great night. So mark your calendars, everybody, to come February 18th to this concert. So um, Wendy, share with us your uh, first year, your connection, you know, with, with um, personally with music and nature for you. Wow. Well, um, I'm, I'm in love with nature. You know, it's, it's my spiritual life. It's 
my life, everything, all the details of nature, big epic wilderness and also all the all the little things that happen, you know, every flower and squirrel in the garden and all that kind of thing is really what inspires my my life. And then my music has kind of come out of that, uh, out of just a um, really an expression of that deep love and and that the love actually takes on a spiritual quality, you know, at being pagan, nature for me and the cycles of nature and witnessing love changes and being part of nature um, is my spiritual path, just simply observing and being and honoring. So my music is really evolved out of that. It's a celebration and an expression. So like nature, there's high times and low times and death and rebirth continuously. And my music explores and honors that in my own life and in a kind of mythic framework as well, I guess. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, and now you're giving this workshop on um, the art of transition. And um, so we want to talk about that. And you do um, um, have an interest of, you know, I mean, this art of transition, it has to do with navigating through our life's changes. So I'd love for you to share what that means to you and 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 why you see the need um, to help teach people, particularly women, about this. Yeah. Uh well, one of the earliest quotes that, you know, I read as a, as a beginning pagan, you know, 20 more years ago, was that wonderful quote from Starhawk that says, um, she changes everything she touches and everything she touches changes. And that really deeply affected me. Like, I've meditated upon that again and again. She, of course, being the goddess and nature and Mother Earth. And... Um, as I said, witnessing and honoring and loving nature so much, what you do see all the time is constant change. There's no point ever, even seeming times of dormancy, there's actually something secretly stirring underneath, you know. Um, and so change happens. It happens in our lives. And we, um, you know, as, as, a, as a woman, as a human, as an animal, as an earthling, I, I'm going through those changes just like you are all the time. So sometimes those changes can feel incredibly joyous, you know, like falling in love or um, a new child or something like that. And sometimes those changes can be really challenging, like endings, a, a loss of a loved one or the end of a job or, you know, illness or whatever. But no matter what, the change, our changes in our life, physical changes, you know, menopause and um, births and deaths and the whole bit, and also more kind of um, emotional changes, relationship changes, they're going to have an effect on us. They're going to happen because we are part of, out of, part of nature and the changes are going to happen. And what I want to do, what I love to do, uh, is help people kind of take the energy of that change and recognize that there can be something very, very positive even in the most challenging times of change. And, um, you know, I guess today being inauguration day, <laughs> it's, it's a big change. And um, we're going to be wanting to take this energy and somehow make something positive out of this, which we're seeing with the mobilization of people all across the country, all across the world, holding marches to say, hey, this is what we stand up for. And so a, ch a change that could be really negative could very well be turned to something very positive. Yes, and it's it's important to hold on to that and, and keep that in mind, you know, because we forget, mm -hmm. we kind of lose faith or, you know, we see all the, because in the news, you're going to see all the horrible things that happen and, you know, and all these changes that are going to impact people and people go into fear and we have to hold on to what we stand for and, and keep that faith and that hope and keep, you know, standing strong. I, you know, we can't let go of that. It's so, and it's so easy to do that. Exactly. It's so important. And I think this applies to all change in our lives. We, When we stand at the threshold of change, of course, inevitably, there's going to be some kind of fear because we're stepping into something unknown, whatever that might be. And um, so part of what I like to encourage people to do in this workshop is to be brave enough and take that energy of courage and of willpower to step into something new and navigate that swirling river and let it 
direct you to something that's positive, somehow um, channel positive energy into that change so it takes you where it needs to go and to learn and grow from it rather than resist it. It's when I think when we resist change, because change, like I say, it's going to happen, when we resist change rather than directing it, then it becomes so much more painful and so and can be so destructive rather than um, life-affirming. It, it can become really um, negating. Yeah, Sam, I'm going to get, you know, they feel powerless too. And, and you know, it's, it's important yeah. to, like, I so totally agree to, and it's hard to do, you know, because we do that resisting. We don't want change. It's so uncomfortable. But we, this because we, we want to be comfortable. We want to be comfortable with the familiar. <laughs> and, and But if we're going to grow and, and transform <laughs> and, you know, live a purpose for life, we have to go through those changes and go through those difficult times. And, you know, grin and, grin and bear it just came to me. But uh, that's yeah. it. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and somehow make it make it really good. As, as we're talking, I'm looking out the window now at my car, fully loaded, yet again, ready for yet another road trip. And um, my husband, Tim, and I, are, are, we're in Portland, right, Portland, Oregon right now, and we're just about to begin a road trip to take us to New Mexico tomorrow and um, to begin a whole new life, of a new home, and we don't know where that's going to be yet. And so we're right in that threshold of change right now, and it definitely has its challenges. And I think maybe just because I'm a traveling musician and um, maybe just because I'm living as an artist and a traveling musician and all those kind of things, I have to learn to navigate change well or else you can't survive in this in this world. And so, you know, I, I feel like I've kind of picked up some skills in um, in how how to how to work with that and not just totally, <laughs> totally lose it when there's this constant state of uncertainty um, and seeming instability, how to ride those kind of rough waters and still stay afloat. Yes, yeah, that's the important part is to, to stay grounded and, and, and take care of yourself mm-hmm. um, while you're going through the changes because you're going to go through change. So somehow you have to, you know, create some uh, some uh, tool, have some tools and skills. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk more with Wendy Rule. Registration is now open for the 25th Annual Woman of Wisdom Conference. Join the fabulous presenters from around the country on February 16th through the 20th. If you believe in raising the feminine spirit and transforming our world, then this conference is for you. Get your tickets now. One day and full weekend passes are available. For more information about presenters and tickets, visit womanofwisdom.org. That's womanofwisdom.org. Are you sick of feeling overworked with no motivation? Take a break from the daily grind. Life coach Nicole Eisler is here to provide a healing journey of optimism. Passionate and caring, Nicole is no ordinary soul. Her dedication to helping everyone has no limit. Witness the power of positivity. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific for Positivity Party Radio with Nicole Eisler on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit BigDreamAwakening.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Beyond being this amazing neurologist, inventor, author, Dr. Dan Cohen has been called to look at technology and look at personal and spiritual development and merge these together. As technology uses the healing and psycho-spiritual effects of synchronized sounds, vibrations, electromagnetic fields, and how that interacts with us in our nervous system in what we're calling the Soltech Chair. The Soltech Lounge induces profound levels of relaxation that transition over time into deep meditative states. The synchronized sound vibration and magnetic field induce 
these states. The subject doesn't have to work at it. To learn more, go to soltechwellbeing.com. That's S-O-L-T-E-C, well-being. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and we're with Wendy Rule. She's giving a workshop at Woman of Wisdom on Sunday, February 19th, The Art of Transition, Discovering Magic at the Threshold of Change. And and, and we've just been talking about all these changes that we're, we're kind of going through nationally, and, and we're always going through personal changes. So I think this is a very important workshop where we can get some tools and, and have conversations with other women, because I think that is um, so helpful to have that, that sharing of of our, of our experiences and how we've dealt with dealt with things because there's there's a lot of commonality in, in in this topic of going even though our changes are different there's a lot of commonality but for Wendy would you give your website uh, where people can go and learn about you and probably see your CDs yeah. and listen to your music sure it's um just www.wendyrule.com so that's w e n d y r u l e dot com okay great so. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, yeah, I was just thinking we were talking earlier in the break about, about change and we we're talking about mythology and I thought maybe I could share some of the mythological insights of change and what mythology has taught me navigating these waters. Oh, that'd be great. Yes. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I love nature and my other great influence in my music is mythology and, uh, I've always loved story and story is based around change. A story is pretty boring if a character doesn't move through some kind of evolution. And um, mythology is so potently, you know, embraces this energy of change. And in fairy tale and mythology, threshold realms are anything that's not quite here or not quite there. So that can be like a time zone, midnight or solstice or something, but it can also be a place like a um, threshold of a door or a bridge or the place where the underworld begins, you know. So I'm fascinated by this in fairy tale and mythology. And one of the one of the myths that has moved me so deeply in my life is the story of Persephone and her journey into the underworld. And so in that story, the Greek story, she's kind of dragged into the underworld unwillingly, but once she's down there, she embraces that change and actually evolves into the queen of the underworld. And I feel that she has so much to teach us of coming into our strength during during times of change and times that we can just feel so lost. Um, so studying those myths for me, which I've got, you know, there's so many fabulous examples of change and shape-shifting in myths, um, has been like one of the great strengths that's kind of kept me sane for all the changes in my life. Um, and as well as that, I really am a great advocate for simply deep self-nurturing during change as well, eating well and resting and um, connecting in with, with nature and spending time in big nature, spending time in community. And every myth that has fascinated me, you know, about these times of change hints at those at those healing tools, you know, of um, helpers and, and friends somehow helping us get through these deep, you know, periods of change, these challenges. Yeah, So, and, and there's so much to learn with nature. And it's also very... Um, I don't know, something about when, you know, when you're kind of going through, you have a rough day or something, then you just go out for a walk and you're, you're outside or you're in a park and you're by trees and you can feel the shift. Like, you know, you can actually, you know, come back from a walk and feel there's a, a shift in your energy that you can go through the rest of the day. Um, you know, so it kind of transforms like- the turmoil, you know. 
Exactly. And, you know, a lot of what, I'm, what I'll be teaching in this workshop is really a reminder. People know this stuff anyway. We know it intuitively what makes us feel better and what brings our allows our wisdom to be brought to um, the surface during times of change. Exactly. Things like that. Going for a walk, hanging out in nature, sitting in the sun, um, hanging out at the beach. Even And also things like sisterhood, I think, is really important during this time, reminding ourselves that we're not alone. And because that can be the most scary thing about change too, I think, is thinking, is this only me? I, you know, and actually oh, yeah. just, yeah, it's like, you know, I, I um, I'm turned 50 in October and that was, you know, that's a threshold and I was pretty excited about that and I've been doing the whole menopause thing and I feel very at ease being open and talking with other women about my experiences because I think when we move uh, into a collective understanding and can share our insights and wisdom and help each other through that change, then it isn't just this weird thing that we're going through. It becomes a profoundly beautiful thing that we can share and rejoice in together rather than try to hold at bay. You know, it's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah. And, and people uh, out of fears or, or feeling shame or guilt that people don't share or they, you know, there's a lot of people isolate and, and not share what's going on. And that feeling of I'm the only one that goes through this. It's one of the things that I've you know, witnessed many, many years, particularly in the beginning years of woman wisdom was that when someone shared their story, others would go, Oh, I'm not alone. And they, they would be get, given permission to share their story. And then there'd be healing mm-hmm. for that. Cause when you share it and talk about it, you release that shame and that guilt and those, all those fears get released. And then you can bring in the new, like you get, then you're open to new ideas coming in like, Oh, maybe I'll try this, you know, or exactly. Yeah, and I think that that's why I love mythology so much too, because these are shared stories that have been passed down through generations and generations, you know, from so many different cultures that these shared stories become our story, and we can all um, recognize in them that oh, that feeling of suddenly falling down into the underworld and feeling lost—that's actually a universal feeling. That's not just my own feeling. You know, or, or whatever it might be, that feeling of rejoice of coming back up again is also, you know, just like um, Persephone surfacing again. That's our story. That's a collective story. And so mythology can kind of become the seed that's planted that helps other women to open up and share their own personal version of these stories, which we all have, you know. Um, and you actually mentioned something, you know, before about the shame. I think one of the great epic changes that we go through in our lives is simply aging. And um, and there's a, for women, there's been a lot of shame around that um, in our overculture. And again, I'm all up for embracing this change, loving it, nurturing it, and being proud of this change. Um, and so, you know, the workshop will also touch on areas of that. What are our feelings around aging? And, um, and what does that mean to us? And what does it mean on a personal level and on a cultural level, and how can we help each other through this, you know, exciting and continuum development of life? Mm-hmm. So, Tony, you know, it just reminded me that your workshop is Sunday evening, which means it's open to men. And, you know, oh, we, good. Yeah. We, we kind of focus on women. I mean, women was we focus on women, and, and, and we think that women are the ones going through this. But, and men, you know, have, have their issues, too, of, of, of the transitions and the changes and, and and I wonder how it's different for them if you've ever, you know, mm. had those kinds of discussions of, of that it's difficult for them to talk about going through changes because they're supposed to be strong and masculine and, you know, know all the answers, you know. And where's their place for them to, to share their concerns and their worries about changes in life, yeah. and aging and all that? Exactly. And there's things like, you know, for women, you know, we get very physical markers of our change, but men do too, you know, like things like balding and stuff like that. I bet a heap of men are scared of things like that, of those changes or just of of the, the shaming around aging for men as well. You know, it's a, it's a whole different different set of um, circumstances. I will be very interested to, um, to, to share, to be able to share with um, any genders that turn up at this workshop and just ex- experience and share what our 
what what change is for all of us. Yes. Well, I would love for because you were at the conference last year, and I would love for you. We have a couple of minutes left to for you to share your experiences at Woman of Wisdom. Yeah. Well, um, it, it was amazing, of course, and that's why I'm coming back again. Um, and I feel very honoured to be invited back again too. It was it was a really challenging time for me because it was actually that that was the weekend that, um, as I think I might have told you that. My mum passed away um, on the Monday after that weekend. And during my workshop topic last year was the healing powers of the underworld. And I found myself catapulted (laughs) in true mythological fashion into the absolute depths of the underworld during the conference as I knew my mum was dying. And, um, you know, she was in Australia and I was there in America, but the So I was really raw and really open and very vulnerable. And I found myself in a container of such deep love and tenderness and kindness. And I felt I could be totally in my process and still be a professional and run my workshop and do my concert and stuff. But I felt that I could let go and just actually be supported through what was a very challenging time for me. And you know, I'm very, very, very grateful for that. And so I guess I learnt, um, uh, you know, there I was right in the thick of change. And I think that's why I wanted to then do this series of workshops this, you know, this year, last year and this year after experiencing that epic change of losing my mum. But I also felt that because I was right in the thick of it, that I got to know the WOW community in a way I might not have if I'd just gone in there in all my strengths. Um, so I felt very supported and um, embraced and felt oh. that I could, uh, yeah, so I loved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great that that was there for you because a lot of times we go through those kinds of experiences by ourselves. Well, we have to exactly. uh, close and close with Wendy. Thank you so much for being on the show today and for coming to Women of Wisdom again. Wendy, look forward to seeing You're you. Yeah, and so everybody all check right. out. Thanks a lot, um, Chris. Yeah, check out her white her a description what she's going to do on the website womanwisdom.org. It's Sunday night, February 19th, the art of transition discovering magic at the threshold of change. So we're going to take a break now and we're going to come back and talk with another presenter, Kaya Singer. Join in on one of the most life-transforming adventures in personal expansion and world service. In each of our upcoming shows, you're going to have the opportunity to join thousands as we focus healing energy to elevate and balance our world. This is a chance for like-minded individuals like you and I to join forces with light workers all over the globe as we light the way for peace, harmony, and a world driven by love. You'll also learn about magical innate abilities that you can develop and use to make your dreams come true. Joy Elaine, author of The Joy Chronicles, invites you to join her and millions of others working with the Galactic Masters, Angels, and the Ashtar Command as they assist humanity and planet Earth to achieve their ultimate destination of ascension. For more information, visit joyelaine.com. That's joy, E-L-A-I-N-E, dot com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Suzanne Evans. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. 
Tune in to Dynamics of Diversity Radio, scripting the new narrative for immigration with leading experts, Kripa Upadhyay and Steve Tanijo on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will remove the noise that often accompanies discussions on this topic and share a new perspective on the dynamics of immigration and diversity, ever reminding us that together we are all at the core of innovation, excellence, and positive change. Visit OrbitLawPLLC.com for upcoming topics. Registration is now open for the 25th Annual Woman of Wisdom Conference. Join the fabulous presenters from around the country on February 16th through the 20th. If you believe in raising the feminine spirit and transforming our world, then this conference is for you. Get your tickets now. One day and full weekend passes are available. For more information about presenters and tickets, visit womanofwisdom.org. That's womanofwisdom.org. Well, welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and now we have Kaya Singer with us today. Kaya Singer is the author of Wiser and Wilder, A Soulful Path for Visionary Women Entrepreneurs. She's been self-employed for, ever, for over 40 years and is a business mentor, artist, and writer. Kaya's passion is to help women discover how to empower themselves and others in fully manifesting their visionary businesses. Kaya's giving a workshop on Saturday, February 18th, Follow Your Vision and Leave Your Wiser and Wilder Footprint. So welcome, Kaya. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. And it does feel like it's been forever, (laughs) not just 40 years. (laughs) (laughs) That is a long time, especially if you've been self-employed all that time. Do you ever feel alone? Like, I mean, I'm kind of, uh, in a sense, self-employed and, um, you know, working alone has a certain aspect to it. Yeah, you know, I did feel like that when I was first starting the business, but now it's different. I have like a whole team and a lot of people around me, so, you know, that's part of the thing about growing bigger, I guess, and getting more established, so (laughs) it's Um, true. Yeah, yes. Well, uh, tell us your story. What drew you to be an entrepreneur and then ending up in the business that you're in? How did that? Yeah, great great question. Um, You know, I think that I'm just sort of the the free spirit type, and I was starting from my first, you know, right at the beginning, you know, right out of college, and so the idea of getting a job and just working in a cubicle or anything like that was just horrible. You know, I couldn't imagine it. I just had a really creative free spirit soul, you know, so um, I was an art major in college, and I did that because I loved art, and I didn't really have a clue of who I was yet. I think I was a late bloomer, so... I just followed what I was, what I enjoyed, right? And then, so I did, I loved it. Um, you know, I started working in clay and that was my thing. You know, I loved it. Just became a potter and then I got out of college and ended up in here in Oregon. I was in Ohio State. And this Saturday market just, it opened in the city. And I thought, oh my God, I can do this. So, like within a few weeks, I had found somewhere to throw pots and I just had stuff up on, boards and bricks and there I was in business you know and I truthfully I didn't even think of it as a business I was just doing what I loved but it began kind of a chain reaction into the rest of my life I mean after that I just did one thing after another that I created um, you know sort of that real entrepreneurial spirit of just having your own idea from your own skill and vision and making it into a business so now, here I am still doing that. I'm 69 now. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's great. Well, and you help women, um, you know, as a mentor to grow their businesses. And so I'm curious, like, what are the yeah. biggest challenges yeah. you see for women and how and how you help them to overcome them? Oh, yeah. Great question. Because basically through all my journey of, you know, doing businesses, I ran into every possible issue you can think of. I ran into every wall. I felt you know, incompetent, you know, lack of confidence, fears, struggles, everything, you know. And so part of what I did was learn how to be a business person. And then, you know, I was sort of naturally good at marketing. I don't know why. I think because I'm just good with people. And I was living in New Zealand. I lived there for about 12 years. And I, at the time, I was a counselor. And I started a whole 
practice, counseling practice there in two different cities in New Zealand, a strange country, and managed to get lots of um, clients. You know, people started noticing me, partly because I was American maybe, but I was naturally good at marketing without knowing what I was doing. So people wanted me to help them. So I started that way, you know, helping people to, you know, do the things that were just kind of second nature to me and then figuring out more what I had done. So I love it. You know, I think the counseling really wasn't the right thing for me, but what is true is I use those skills now in the next thing that I've started doing. And I've, I've been doing this business as a mentoring um, on visionary women since 1997. And I love it because the women, mostly women, uh, face those issues of lack of confidence and self-doubt and fears. And they're really good at what they do, but they don't know how to put the business part together. And so it feels very empowering and exciting to help them do that. And I love seeing the successes that come out of it, too. Yeah, that's, that's a the, long-winded answer, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it's true. It's it's um it's it's great to see um you know women thrive, and there are such all sorts all sorts of challenges in developing a business. Um, so and you wrote a book, Wiser and Wilder: A Soulful Path for Visionary Women Entrepreneurs. So tell us about Wiser and Wilder. Yeah, thanks. That's a good question too, because I, at some point, you know, I was in my mid sixties, and I thought. I need to, you know, I need to write this book. And the coach I was working with said, yeah, you need to write this book. You know, it's it's sort of my, I had written another book, but it wasn't my real story and, and my real legacy sort of in a way. And so the book was going to be really what I, my mark in the world. You know, I knew it, you know, that what I really believed and And I kept trying to think what the title would be. And because I felt like, in a way, it was a memoir, it isn't a memoir at all, because there's lots of women's stories in there, not just mine, and there's a lot of teachings and activities and everything. But in in that memoir sort of way, I felt like this is my book. So the wiser part came from being in that wiser part of life. You know, I felt like here I was in my mid-60s, getting toward, you know, late mid-60s, thinking... It's my wisdom that's coming forward, and it's really about not just me, really. It's about all the women's wisdom and understanding that they, every woman can tap into that place in themselves, you know. And the wilder part, you know, somebody said, oh, make it called older and wiser, and I was like, no, the word, the word older doesn't work, you know. It's like I didn't want to adopt that. Wilder was much more my word because I felt I feel like the older I get, the more I'm in touch with that wild part of myself that I had lost for a while when I was working so hard. You know, that kind of real feminine spirit of taking risks and dancing on the beach and, uh, you know, around the fire and all that. So that's that's really what it means. It's like wiser and also being wilder means, you know, being creative, being a free spirit. And yeah, it calls for it. I was just going to throw in there, it calls for me, yeah. it calls forth like being, you're having the passion, you know, if you, in, yeah. you know, being wilder is being, like you say, free and, and, um, being free to be who you really are. And with that, with a passion, you know, we want to feel passionate about things we do instead of it's just work. You know? Exactly. It's it bringing that passion in and it's sort of, the book is about giving women permission to get in touch with their wild woman, you know, inside, which is that passionate part that you're talking about, you know, and, and only from that place, really, can you be really successful in your business, truthfully, because I think when you're constricted, and you think, I got to figure out how to do this business in a way that's going to work, like, and you follow somebody else's system, and it's based on what you think you should do, it doesn't work. You know, it mm-hmm. doesn't work at all. It, it's flat. It doesn't have that passion you're talking about. Because it's, in a way, it's like snowflakes. There aren't any two that are the same, you know. So you have to find your, who you are. <laughs> and that's that part of it. And, you know, it's sort of your brand of wisdom, you know. So I, it's it's about your wise woman and your wild woman. And that's the, mm-hmm. that's really the the message in the book, too. So. Yeah. And there's a lot, I'm sure you come across a lot of fear of it. You're talking about transition and change of tapping into that. And, and oh, we were just talking to Wendy Rule because her workshop's on transition and, and change yeah. and 
and all the fears that comes up with that, um, sometimes we're, we're sort of afraid to make that first step into that wilder part of us or the passion where we would love to yeah. go. And yet all that uncertainty is about that. How do you help women overcome that? Cause it holds us back. And if we don't do it, we, we, res- we, we are, we get upset and, um, get up, yeah, just get upset at ourselves. And, 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 and if we don't, we, and when we do, th- there's all, it's just all those fears of stepping into something new of what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and no, it's, it's true. What you've just said is exactly the way it is. And I think that, you know, women come to me usually when they're stuck, you know, if they're like thinking, I know I need help. You know, I really want to do this business. And if I don't get help, I'm going to either have to quit and get a job or, you know, something. And it is true that I think one of the things that helps women is to have community around them and to get help, whether it's hiring a mentor or being in mastermind groups, finding your tribe, you know, I call it that. But women really need other women that actually, there's, you know, I, I'm in a, I have a group that I run, um, a coaching group sort of for my clients. And one woman posted yesterday a, a live video. It's a, and she said, and she was in tears, and she was saying exactly what you are. Like, I know what I need to do, but I'm terrified of doing it. I feel like, you know, I'm going to be embarrassed and screw up, and I'm going to look bad in front of everybody and all that. And the truth is you have to be willing to do that. You know, it's like I say, hey, look, at nobody actually cares except for you, you know, when you when you try something and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It, you're the only one. Everybody else is focused on themselves. They're not really paying attention. Right. Yeah. I've used that when I made a mistake and I, and I, you felt like every, oh, everybody's looking at you and, and yeah. they're not. <laughs> so one thing is you have to be willing to, you have to be willing to try things and they don't always work. And you learn the not only work, the not always working part is part of the process because when you see what works and what doesn't work, you learn something then. It's all about experimenting and being willing to take a risk. It's, and I think most of the women that I work with understand that in the other part of their life. You know, they these are people that have traveled through Europe by themselves. You know, they've, they've done a lot of things that are risky, you know, in relationships. Yeah, there is, yeah, the, taking, in. yeah, taking the risk. Well, we have to take a quick break. So um, okay, yeah. we'll, we'll be, be right back. back. We'll talk more with Kaya Singer. Dr. Brie Gibbs is a fourth-generation high priestess with the knowledge to raise your vibration in conscious creation. Offering a wide variety of services from goddess light and shamanic healing seminars to private reading sessions, Brie works with you so you too can stand in your own power. Isn't it about time you took your life into your own hands? For more information about Brie's services and products, visit silvergaia.net. That's silver, G-A-I-A dot net. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. 
Registration is now open for the 25th Annual Woman of Wisdom Conference. Join the fabulous presenters from around the country on February 16th through the 20th. If you believe in raising the feminine spirit and transforming our world, then this conference is for you. Get your tickets now. One day and full weekend passes are available. For more information about presenters and tickets, visit womanofwisdom.org. That's womanofwisdom.org. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and I've been talking with Kaya Singer. Um, Kaya, can you share your website and anything that you have to offer there? Absolutely. Um, my website is called awakeningbusiness.com. Awakeningbusiness.com. You can also get there just through my name, kayasinger.com. And, you know, my website right now, it's going to be going through a shift soon. It's really about, you know, helping visionary women entrepreneurs. But really, you know, as my business is shifting, you know, I'm starting to work with all women who are visionaries. And they may not be owning a business yet, but they want to make a difference in the world through through what they love, you know, what they're passionate about. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you're going to be very busy in the next eight years. Or four years, oh, I, hopefully. I know. I, don't think, I think most of the people in my age group have kind of thrown out that whole definition of retired. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's changed. <laughs> yes, yes. Who, who, who's really going to retire? Exactly. I'm. Um, yeah. My husband and I are retiring, but we do, there's, it's just a different definition. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Well, we were talking about taking risks and, and, you know, it's like stepping into retirement. Sometimes there's risks involved in that. But one thing I was just thinking about this, we notice as we get older and and we see this like we're like grandmothers and stuff. We care less about what other people think and we get a little more brazen and we're more willing to take risks or or maybe in speaking out because, you know, what have we got to lose? So, you know, it's that crone who speaks her mind and, and you also have a topic about that of calling on your, I think you mentioned it, calling on your inner crone. And That's right. Yeah. And I, to me, I, that came to me sort of while I was writing the book and I have a whole chapter in the book called Crone Medicine. And, you know, I feel like I'm moving into that place in my life. And even though, you know, I'm turning 70 next year and crones always seemed older than me, but boy, you know, the, the gap's getting smaller. <laughs> it's so funny. But what I, what is true is that there's, what I know about, you know, women that come into that, that age, you know, is there's a, there's a solidness and there's a wisdom, there's insight, there's like inner sight that comes to greater intuition. And it is that time to be more of a mentor for other people, you know, of, of who you are. And it is true is that we just, you get to the point where you don't care. You just can try things and it's not so important whether everybody likes you all the time, you know. So I I really work with younger women. The, a lot of the women I work with are younger than me. And, and they get stuck still in that kind of wanting to be liked, you know, and afraid to make mistakes. And I tell people to access their inner crone. And they get it right away. It's like that wise woman inside of you, that older wise woman. It's like I tell people to visualize sort of a a, a really big old grandma tree. And I there was a cherry tree that I grew up with that looked like that, just the, the gnarly and the big the big trunk and all that. And just stand next to that tree and feel the wisdom and the energy from it, and know that you can actually breathe that in in yourself. And it will give you that feeling of confidence and being willing to just step out and do what you need to do in the world and not be stopped. And so that's what the inner crone in the general sense is. But, you know, you can ask a question specifically and get an answer. And you don't have to wait until you're 60, 70, or 80 
to access that part of yourself. And that's just like we learned how to access our inner child. You know, that mm-hmm. was a big thing a number of years ago. And it's the same thing. You access your inner crone. It's a part of you that doesn't actually correlate to the age you are, but it's still a bit vibration and energy that you can bring forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's, it's, um, it's a great advice for them because that the knowledge is within us. And um, yeah. Bringing in that crone energy and and that's within us, and we might maybe we're accessing a, a grandmother that we, you yeah. know, related to really well or was special to us or or whoever can. And that's one way to access that if you can't feel like it's in yourself, but just to know that that's there to go inside. Again, it's always going inside and finding these answers. The answers are there. Um, it's true. Yes. And and the other thing I've started doing is bringing my art back into my business and. At this age, at this older age of mine, and I'm starting to do inner crone um, portraits for people, which is really cool. I mean, it's, we don't have time to talk about that right now, but it just shows you what might come later in life. You may think you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and then you get to the next stage, and a whole other world opens up for you. Uh, that's exactly the center. I love that drawing people's inner crones. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah, they have something there to. Um hang on to it away, you know? So well, one of the right. things you, um, and one of the things that woman wisdom is about is building community. And yeah. one of your topics is building a soulful community. And I, I'd loved, um, to talk about that because, you know, you did mention, you know, it's very important for entrepreneurs to f- and women, especially to find, yeah. um, other women and find the support and find communities. And how do you suggest people do that? And how do we build, uh, and it's not just building community. I love what you're saying. Soulful community. It's, you know, it's like getting the yeah. right people in place for you. That's right. And I think that, you know, living in the world community is sort of a general world word. Soulful community is quite different because it's people who really feel like they're your tribe. They're people that understand you, that support you, that you're aligned with, you know, and they aren't necessarily best friends, but they're people that just give you energy being around them. And it's really important as an entrepreneur to, or to just any kind of visionary person that you're wanting to put your, you're wanting to create your thing in the world, that you, you need to have those people around you. And for women, like you just touched on, as women, we've been sitting in circles with women for as long as history. I mean, women have sat in circles making quilts together, you know, making tortillas, you know, all, you know, women just do that. We're naturally in circles. And so... I think that it's really hard for women to be feel good about themselves or be successful or whatever you call that if you're isolated. You just need the energy from others. So, I mean, this event, Women of Wisdom, is so important. Any kind of event like this is so important because it brings people together, you know, not just to learn what we're all teaching, but that we have connections with each other. It's about who you're going to meet when you're there. It could be mm-hmm. somebody you're sitting next to in a workshop that you become really connected with. I mean, that's happened to me over and over again. Yeah, lifetime friends have been made and groups or, or you know, someone starts in a, yeah. an organization and, yeah, lots of things have happened. And and it's the connections. A lot of times it's connections in between workshops. You know, you meet that's someone right. in a workshop and then you go have lunch and we have a social area and we have a tea area and, and we have lunchtime and, and that's when other stuff, the People, juicy stuff happens too. It happens over the conversations, exactly. You know, and, and, you know, I have the kind of business now, which I love that I can, you know, my my clients are part of my community. You know, we stay connected forever. You know, they, they may not be my client anymore, but we've worked together and we're peers. And, I, you know, there's so many layers of your social community. And you never know when you're going to meet somebody that, is part of your circle. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, that's so you great. Have to get out. You have to get out of in front of your computer and yes. Yes, you have people. to. You have to come to Woman of Wisdom. Get away from your computer. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and for going to be a presenter yeah. at Woman of Wisdom. You're so welcome. I'm so looking forward to it. It's going to be very fun. Yeah, so everybody, Kai is giving a workshop Saturday, February 18th. Follow your vision and leave your wiser and wilder footprint. And also remember, Wendy Rules Workshop is Sunday night, which includes men, um, Uh on the Art of Transition, and her concert Saturday night. 
So I'm Chris Stanis and the founder of Women of Wisdom. We're in our 25th year. I hope to meet you at the conference February 16th through the 20th and listen to your story. Um, you know, I hang out and talk to people too. Um, okay. Just go to womenofwisdom.org. You can uh, look for the 2017 conference links. There's a um, one page with all the schedule of events that you can just read about everybody, um, all the fabulous women that are going to be presenting, some very talented women. And also a reminder, join us tonight for our mindful meditation for the Women's March that's happening tomorrow in Seattle. I'll be giving a meditation. We've got some Women of Wisdom uh, performers of singing and drums, and it's going to be a wonderful evening at Amazing Grace Spiritual Center in Ballard. You can find uh, read about it at the um, on our website. You'll see it posted there, womanofwisdom.org. And check out my book, Woman of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Woman. It's a compilation um, of all the stories from Women Wisdom and, and uh, uh, many, many explorations of the divine feminine through art and poetry and stories. So check that book out on our website as well. So um, we're at the end of our show. I am so glad that you were with us today and I want everybody to have a great weekend. And um, if you're not marching for women, hold the energy for them, hold the energy for all the women in many, many cities around the country. So I'll be back next week, next Friday with some more Women of Wisdom guests. Thank you so much. It's been lovely being here. been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.